child, a fully grown child. Here's my baby. Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everybody and welcome to Jobs and Showbiz. Today we have John Corbett, no big deal here. <laughs> Very big deal. How are you today? Well, today, <laughs> it kind of is today. It's about two in the morning. Yes. We're in Hamilton in the church and everyone's having lunch. And, and here we are. Yeah, you said, let's, can we do an interview sometime? And I said, right now, after lunch. Right now. So here we are, and I've got the guy in the flesh. So let's try to squeeze everything in as quickly as possible. What do you want to know? All right. So you are an actor, you're a singer, you've done commercials, you've kind of done everything. Is there something that you prefer? You know, I've had a band for 10 years, John Corbett Band, and uh, we've probably played 750 shows in the last 10 years. It's a lot of work. It's, <laughs> yeah. I, I do all the driving. We don't have a, a tour manager. I'm the tour manager. We don't have a bus. We get a rent a Suburban. There's four of us. We play four or five hundred seaters, but I drive every mile, which is usually about seven hours between gigs, and we'll go out for two to three weeks at a time, and in 14 days we can do 11 or 12 shows, but we do a three hour show with no breaks. Wow. Yeah, and I do most of the singing, and then we do a meet and greet after, which is, can be two or three hours. You know, driving away four hours later to, to the Kansas next, City, the next gig. thinking, I can't barely, I talk, I can't talk, but somehow you pull it together. So that's hard uh, compared to this. You know, you stand on your mark, and someone gives you a coffee, and Living the dream. Yeah, you, you say a couple words and they're like, how's that? Do you think you have another one in you? you know? For sure. This is a pretty cush job compared to the other one. Uh, so, I think I'd take the other one. The other one? Yeah, because, you know, I don't always want to be cushy in life. You're only here yeah. for a short time. Yeah, so you're living the true artist lifestyle. I think I am. I think I am living. You know, and when I'm not on the road or when I'm not making a movie, uh, I'm... I'm pretty artistic. I like to paint and uh, I play the piano. So it's and, definitely in your genes. <laughs> yeah, and I do, and I it, and I sew and I embroider. Ah. So it, I want to learn that. <laughs> it's it's fun. It's in my genes and on my genes. Yeah. I want to briefly talk about my big fat Greek wedding because when I think back to my childhood, that is one movie my entire family went to multiple times. I don't think I've seen any other movie in theaters more than once. Wow. So thanks for making us laugh. Yeah. <laughs> my parents will be so jealous after <laughs> I tell them I spoke to you and got to work <laughs> with you. Um, can you tell us, well first, did you enjoy that experience of working on that set in particular? Making the movie? I got a lot, I did, and I got a lifelong friend out of uh, Neo Vardalis. I got to see this girl. It rarely happens unless you're on a TV show and, like, say, Friends, and everybody becomes famous at once. Yeah. Uh, you know, when you when you kind of become famous, then you meet other famous people at some award show or something, and you'll say, "Oh, I really like your movies," or you know, whatever. And you'll go home and say, "I met Dustin Hoffman." <laughs> yeah. um, it was neat to see that rise from the very beginning for Nia. I, I mean, it's just an incredible person uh, who had this ride and and it all started with a uh, with a uh, one woman show for a, a little theater she did for about a hundred people out in LA called my big fat Greek wedding oh, I didn't where, know that. yeah where she yeah. played all the characters and and Tom Hanks and Rita Wilson because Rita's Greek uh, just happened to come see it they were in New York and saw some plays and we gotta do this more often when we get back to LA and and because she's Greek she saw it and they they went to see it and said, hmm, could be a movie in this. And there you go. Yeah, but it was a blast to be involved. In. And we did the sequel uh, about eight, right here in Toronto. We saw that. <laughs> yeah, we shot both of them here in Toronto. Uh, Nia's from Winnipeg, and she was at Second uh, Second City yeah, here. Yeah, I've heard of it. Yeah, and she went to college here, so uh, we shot it a year and a half ago. And we're talking about maybe doing a third one now, too. Quite interesting. So is, are you still training as an actor at this stage or have you mastered the craft? You know what I did today? I went out on uh, Young Street 
and I have my little hat on, I got a coffee, I have my sunglasses, and I stood in the doorway and I watched people coming back and forth for about two hours. Really? And I heard little bits of conversation, and I watched this one guy walk by and thought, I gotta try to steal that walk for a movie. So I'm always looking in class me. in a yeah. weird way. Always looking for inspiration. Yeah. That's inspiring. Or to steal something, you know, steal, <laughs> steal a walk. You or never steal. Know. I'm getting ready to go to, to Little Work. This is actually my last night of filming this movie, and I'm leaving in the morning uh, to go back to California for two days. And then I'm off to Little Rock, Arkansas, to do a movie. Oh, you're a busy man. <laughs> I'm a busy man for a month, but I actually saw a guy, I'm playing a public defender, and I saw a guy walking by, an older guy in a suit today. And so I'm going to steal that. Look, I like he had a vest and a tweed jacket. So I'm always trying to get his word. Awesome. And if you could tell your younger self something, what would it be? Professionally. Of course. Uh, <laughs> stop drinking. Stop drinking. Stop <laughs> drinking. Because... And, and not trying to be funny, but you know, I just I gave up drinking about. I'm 56, and uh, I gave up drinking about three years ago. I just quit drinking because I was kind of hungover all the time, and and uh, you know, it's part of being young. But you know, I I gave up a good chunk of my career, uh, not career, but my my youth, and uh, being able to go do some interesting things because I chose to party a little bit more in my in my 30s and even into my 40s and you know I was sometimes I would be a little hungover at work and I didn't respect it as much as I do now so I would have told my young I would tell my younger self to slow down and enjoy what you're doing because it only comes around once and you know if you're blurry you can't really remember <laughs> but it definitely shaped you into the person you are now right yeah, I guess all roads all roads do that, but yeah. uh, I would have told the younger me to slow down a little bit and, and respect it a little bit more. Well, it's a process. And before yeah. I let you go, if there was another job you could do on set, what would it be and why? But it would be casting. Casting? Oh, that's a cool one. Yeah, I, I'm always casting movies in my mind when I when I see a movie that doesn't really live up to the standard that I think it should have, I say, you know, it would have been good in that role. And, uh, Olivia. And I, <laughs> yep. Yeah. Olivia would be good in every role. Exactly. Smart man here. <laughs> yeah, I do. I, I, I would have been a good casting director, I think. Awesome. Well, who knows? Maybe the opportunity will come. Maybe I'll make my own movie one day and I'll get to cast it. There we go. That could happen. And I'll be on speed dial. <laughs> well, thanks, John, for talking to us. Thanks, guys, for watching. Like, subscribe. And we'll see you next week.